Hello everybody. Today we're going to review exponential functions. So we'll begin by talking about the transformations of exponential functions. Remember that A represents if you have a stretch, a shrink, or a reflection. So it will be a reflection if a is less than zero, so if a is a negative number, it will be a shrink if a is between zero and one, and it will be a stretch if a is greater than one. When you have x minus h, that tells you if you are going left or right. You will go left if you have x plus h, and you will go right if you have x minus h. And then your k value tells you how much you are going up or down. So you will go up if you have a positive k value, and you will go down if you have a negative k value. Here we have the exponential function y equals 1 half um, raised to the power of x minus 1 plus 2. And that is graphed down here for us. They want us to find the domain. The domain are your x values from left to right. Our graph is going to the left forever, so that's going to negative infinity. And our graph is going to the right forever, so that's going to positive infinity. So our domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity, which is the same thing as all real numbers. Our range is our y values from the bottom of the graph to the top of our graph. The bottom of our graph is our asymptote, and that is where y equals 2. Our graph is going up forever, so that's going to infinity. So our range is from 2 to infinity. Or as an inequality, you could say y is greater than or equal to 2. Your x-intercept is where your exponential curve crosses your x-axis. And as you can see, my curve does not cross this x-axis. And it will not, because we have this barrier of the asymptote that's blocking it from getting past this point. And so we will never have an x-intercept, so this is going to be none. Your y-intercept is where your exponential curve crosses your y-axis. That's right here at the point 0, 4. As for my transformations, I have two. Up here I have x minus 1 for my exponent, which tells me that this went right one unit. And then I also have this plus 2 for my k value, so that also tells me that we went up two units. For growth or decay, that depends on your b value. Here my b value is between 0 and 1, so that represents exponential decay. When I trace this curve from left to right, the curve is going down. And so because it's going down from left to right, that means that this is decreasing. For our end behavior, as x approaches negative infinity, this is telling you to look at the left side of the graph. The left side of my graph is pointing up, so that's going to positive infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, this is telling me to look at the right side of my graph. The right side of my graph is on my asymptote. My asymptote is at 2. And then the last thing that they're looking for is the asymptote. Remember, the equation for your asymptote is always y equals k. And so here, that's going to be y equals 2. And that's just the equation of this line right here.
We also learned about compound interest. The compound interest formula is A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the N times T power. And it says you deposit $50 into a savings account that earns 0.05% interest compounded monthly. How much money will be in the account after three years? So the amount you deposit is your principal amount, so that's your p-value. If I'm earning 0.05% interest, remember we always need to convert that out of a percentage. And so um, to do that, I'm going to divide by 100. And so I'm going to get 0 0.005. And then if I'm compounded monthly, then that means n is 12. And I want to know how much is going to be in the account after three years, so T is 3. So let's plug all that into our formula. So I'll have A equals 50 times 1 plus 0 0.005 over 12 raised to the 12 times 3 power. And I'm just going to go ahead and take a minute to enter this into my calculator. And when I do that, I get $50.75. Oops, actually that would be 76 cents if I round up appropriately. So if I look at my third decimal spot, that's higher than five or five or higher, so we round up. So after three years with your money in this bank account, you would have earned 76 cents in interest. And then we had growth of decay word problems and here are those formulas where A equals P times 1 plus or minus r to the power of t. Remember that this formula is not on your formula sheet, and so on the milestone, this is a formula that you would need to memorize. So a car purchased in 2016 for $11,950 depreciated in value by 14% each year. How much is the car worth in 2021? So the initial value, the 11950 that's P, it's depreciating. And so when it's depreciating, that's when we're going to use the minus sign. Our rate is 14%. 14% as a decimal is 0 0.14. And then the time, T, will be started in 2016, and now it's 2021, so that's five years. And so our equation would be A equals 11,950 times one minus 0 0.14 raised to the fifth power. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and enter that into my calculator. And when I do that, I get $5,621.60. So that same car is now worth $5,621.60 five years later. For the next problem, it says a house purchased in 2005 for $180,000 appreciated in value, so it went up by 4.86% each year. How much is the house worth in 2021? And so we're gonna do the same exact thing that we just did on this last problem. And so the 180,000 is my p-value. And then this is appreciating. So this is going up. So that's when I'm going to use the plus sign. 4.86% um, converted out of a percentage is 0 0.0486. 
And then between 2005 and 2021, that is 16 years. And so in my calculator, I'm just going to go ahead and type that in. And when I do that, I get 384,618 dollars and 49 cents. So clearly this house was worth the investment because it went up by over 300 or went up by over $200,000 in just 16 years. And then the next thing that we learned about was geometric sequences. And so geometric sequences is when you are multiplying or dividing by the same number every time. Remember that A sub 1 is your first term and R is your common ratio. That's how much you're multiplying or dividing by each time. And so the recursive formula for a geometric sequence is A sub M equals um, A sub N minus 1 times R, where the first term is given. And the explicit formula for a uh, geometric sequence is a sub m equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. And so all you need to know is the pattern r, how much you're multiplying or dividing by, and your first term, a sub 1. So in this problem here, 7 is my first term, so 7 is a sub 1. And then to go from 7 to 28, I multiply by 4. 28 to 112, I multiply by 4. And 112 times 4 is 448. So my recursive formula would be a sub m equals a sub n minus 1 times 4, where the first term is 7. And on this last example, my explicit formula would be, well, let's see, 400 is my first term, so that's a sub 1. To go from 400 to 200, I'm multiplying by 1 half. From 200 to 100, I'm multiplying by 1 half. And for 100 to 50, I multiply by 1 half. So you could also say dividing by 2. But remember that your common ratio, R, is always given as if you're multiplying. So when you're dividing, that common ratio, R, is going to be a fraction. And so my explicit formula for this sequence would be A sub M equals 400 times 1 half to the N minus 1 power.